So, you have decided to download and play the hit game Eternal Return. Free on Steam in the micro soft. You see all these cool and unique characters, such as a secret agent who can change weapons in the middle of combat, a drunk martial artist who just grows stronger the more intoxicated she is, a phantom thief with quick mobility and an obscenely huge whip, a cat. And out of all these characters, you decide to play the journalist with a huge camera for a weapon. But now lies the real question. Since this game is a MOBA Battle Royale, where people can craft and use whatever they want, but the only real restriction being their weapon types, how do I play her? Well, today is your lucky day, as I have decided to spend a moderate amount of time to scrap together this little guide to playing Martina. Now before we settle down and get ready to listen to me babble on, I need to point out a disclaimer. I am NOT a professional gamer. I only play this game to have fun, and I do not know everything about how this game works. And, by extension, I do not know how every little detail about Martina and how to optimally play her. I am simply a Martina enjoyer who wishes to spread some knowledge around in hopes of both bringing players into this game, because, uh, lord knows we could use some, and to encourage people to try out some characters with very odd play styles such as our lady here. I also need to point out that while I will be explaining a few mechanics that the game has, this guide will assume that you will understand at least a couple of terms and lingos that this game has, such as what is skill amp. So while I know that this is kind of counterintuitive with my last statement of bringing in new players, I am also just really, really lazy. If you want to get into the real nitty gritty of this game's stats and systems, there are at least two Steam guides out there that try to explain everything. I recommend that one, for no reason in particular. Is it the little ones or the purple ones? Hello? Now then, without further ado, let me try and help you figure out how to play Martina. Let's get the boring parts out of the way first. Her stats. Martina's base stats start off as such, and this is how much they grow up whenever she levels up. She uses a camera for her weapon, and these are the stats that go up for leveling her weapon mastery. Just to briefly explain what weapon mastery is, essentially, while the characters themselves level up whenever they kill, craft, get hit, and so on, their ability to make full use of their weapon needs to be level up too. You can level a set mastery by simply killing things with said weapon. Leveling your weapon mastery is important because the more you have, the more damage you can deal with it. And you will also have access to certain skills that will unlock only if your mastery is high enough. Some characters can make use of multiple weapon types, but if they swap their axe for a knife for example, then they're gonna have to start leveling up their mastery with a knife instead. So it's usually preferred to stick with what you start with. However, Martina only has access to cameras as a weapon. So this small side note doesn't really matter to her. Anyways, as you have noticed, her stats aren't exactly anything to write home about. As a matter of fact, she starts with barely any attack power. Even once you finish whatever low that you've crafted from the ground up and farmed for a bit, they just barely trickle down their health bar. That's if they aren't swinging back, and believe me, they will. Well sh if I can't fight back against a hammer with a video camera, then what am I to do? Well my friend, this is where her ultimate comes in, which is a great segue towards her skills. Martina's passive explains that her basic attacks are multiple hits and require a bar to be full in order for her to basic attack. This bar recharges faster whenever you level up her ultimate. She cannot change the rate of these attacks with extra attack speed, however a portion of extra attack speed does get converted into more attack power. If Martina unloads her entire bar into a target, they are left a mark. Whenever she lands any of her skills at a marked target, they will take extra damage and lose the mark. Other benefits that her passive give is the ability to identify nearby alerts on the minimap to be PvP fights, which will come in handy later in the guide. She also has access to a camera recipe that allows her to craft trail cameras. They are like the usual cameras with the addition that they are also invisible to other players until they get close enough to it. Her Q, fast forward, is a simple skill shot towards wherever you're aiming that deals damage to anyone who was hit by it. If you land her Q on a marked target, you will also get a very short movement speed buff. Her W, called Pause, lets her place a little camera out into the world. On its own, all it does is just give you a vision of its surrounding area. However, if you hit one of these cameras with your Q, the camera will shoot its own attack back at Martina. Thankfully, nothing happens to Martina in this interaction. However, any enemy that gets hit with this attack gets slowed to a painful crawl for a second and take damage. As you can figure it out, a good game plan to have when you're fighting someone as Martina is to sandwich an enemy between you and one of your little cameras on the floor. So whenever you shoot your camera at them, it'll also hit the little camera, which deals extra damage to them alongside the benefit of stopping them in the tracks. Martina can also have two of these little cameras stocked in her skill, and you can only have two of said cameras out in the world at a time. Her E, Rewind, dashes Martina in the direction, leaves behind a videotape, and enters a rewind state. In this state, Martina moves 5% faster and the videotape she left behind spawns a ring around it. Martina leaves the rewind state whenever she uses her E again, she leaves the ring, or after 7 seconds have passed. 
Once she leaves this state, she quickly zooms back to the videotape with CC immunity, and if she hits anyone in the way, they are slowed for a second. Now, bear in mind that once you hit that E, you are doomed to return that videotape whether you like it or not. So if you wanted to use that dash as a way to escape trouble, then you've got another thing coming. Her camera weapon skill is unlocked after leveling up your weapon mastery for a bit. What it does is allows you to flash the camera a short range in front of you, kind of like your W. Anyone hit by it while facing you will turn blind and they will not be able to see anything for a couple of seconds. Which means they can't target you with basic attacks or any skills that require a target to work. You can also technically use it to run away when they can't see you, but they're still very capable of hearing your footsteps, and those are very directional. Now finally, the meat. Or ultimate. Or R. Record. Martina starts recording the world in front of her for a few seconds. Once a valid target gets in range, she gets a nice boost of movement speed and she begins to record them. Once she records the aforementioned target nice for a bit, she'll end the ultimate early and get broadcast stacks. We'll get to what broadcast stacks are for a bit later. Now this skill needs some explaining, so wake up and listen. Martina can get broadcast stacks by recording specific things, and those are other enemy players, trees of life, meteorite, alpha, omega, and wickaline. Once you catch two of any of these targets in your ultimate at the same time, you get two broadcast stacks and a nice boost to your weapon mastery. As a Martina, this is going to be your game plan at the start. Keep an eye on where these targets are and catch people in 4k who are just minding their own business trying to either get their legendary gear or just defending themselves from other players. And I also forgot to mention that once you finish recording people like this, you get a huge movement speed boost to help you get the fuck out of dodge when your targets realize what just happened. But wait! This is all fine and dandy until you realize that every single target that I mentioned you could record can perish. If you can't make it to a tree before it gets to join three, you're too late to spectate a fight, it is still possible to get some broadcast acts, and that is filming bodies. If you run into the corpses of Alpha, Omega, Wick, or any other players, you can record them to get one instead of two broadcast acts, and the weapon mastery boost isn't as good. The good thing is that you only need one body to get this stack, unlike the other method mentioned before, where you need two targets at the same time. Bad news is that you can only record bodies up to six times. And the reward is very obviously nowhere as good as when you catch them a liar. Now to answer your question. What is broadcast stacks and why are they so important? Well, buddy, once you have 12 broadcast stacks... This is where the fun begins. Once Machida has 12 stacks, she enters broadcast mode. Which, apart from dealing a lot more damage now, all of her skills have been enhanced. Her Q now has more range and damage, and hitting a marked target gives you more movement speed, and even some attack speed. Her W now roots instead of slows on hit, and she can hold more cameras in her stock alongside being able to place more of them out in the world. Whenever you return to the videotape that is spawned with her E, a portion of the damage she took while she was in the rewind state is healed back, and enemies hit by the skill are stunned instead of slowed. Her R turns into a huge cone of pain, reducing enemies' defense, and anyone caught in the middle takes STUPID amounts of damage at the end of the ult, while also being stunned for a variable amount of time. Now that is all her skills roughly explained. Be gone! Be gone! Fuck! Yahoo! I did it! I got footage, baby! Now it's time to talk about how to put all of this together in a game. For the sake of keeping this guide short, I will only talk about playing Martina with an attack power based build that I stole from some Asian guy, and not a skill amp one. Because this script's getting long enough already, and because I never really tried skill amp Martina, so I haven't the slightest idea if that plan even works. Once you spawn in, you do the usual of getting your build crafted as quickly as possible. Once you know the location of incoming trees of life or space rocks, grab some cameras and pitch a tent. It's time to rat. If nobody comes and takes the bait in the end, you're free to grab whatever it was you were watching all for yourself. If an unsuspecting victim does walk in though... <laughs> Punk. I'm out of here. If you're worried that you won't be able to get away after doing the deed, you can dash in with E, snap a shot with your ult, and E back away. If you don't really know what to do when your ult's on cooldown, you can spend the downtime getting more cameras or farming for a bit, since leveling up weapon mastery is never bad. Always keep an eye out on the minimap though, as any alert you see is an alert everyone else sees, and someone who could be feeling quite bloodthirsty at the time. I haven't done this yet, but you could also theoretically just stalk someone? If you feel like they get into a lot of conflict, then by all means, just don't get caught. And speaking of getting caught... Battle zones. 
I'm sure it doesn't take a genius to figure out that you should probably be avoiding these as you're not exactly fit for combat. However, if you know that there are at least two other players in the area, you could just walk in and just film their little fight inside the zone. Bear in mind that there is probably no way in hell that you're going to live afterwards too, but hey, since you were in the battle zone, you'll just respawn back in and keep the stacks you got. Now I'm sure that it goes without saying that if one of your non-player turret core targets stay around for a while because people are fighting over it, it's just three stacks for days. So if you can somehow get said spots contested, hell maybe even contest them yourself, then that means that loot is still there for the taking and your cooldown is just getting shorter and shorter. And once the dust cloud has faded and there is finally a victor over the item, you can still stick around and start filming the weirdest horror film you can with all the people that died. So in short, be the rattiest motherfucker you can be, grab some popcorn, and start filming other people's carnage. So far I've been explaining some tactics and tricks on how you can start getting broadcast mode, and you did it! You are now a menace to society. But now what? Well, time to play the game like any other character. Farm, get the things that you want to make food, more gear, traps, and so on. If you ever run into an enemy gamer with a higher mastery than you, don't be scared of how quickly they can run your face through the ground, because I can assure you that they're scared of your ultimate. And if they're not... Educate them. I suppose the next thing I have left to talk about in this guide would be matchups, but to be honest, this is where my knowledge kind of drops to the ground. However, I can try to offer some general advice, such as... If you're going against a melee player, your chances are pretty good as you can kite them to your W and mess them up with the Q and W combo, deal a good chunk of damage while also rooting them for any follow-ups. If they're too close for comfort and you can't shake them off, you can always throw out your E and start to be a bit more reckless as a portion of the incoming damage they deal will come back to you once your E ends. Don't get too reckless though. I have to emphasize that the E only heals a portion of damage taken, not all of it. And your ult can be used pretty much whenever. Usually at the start, as the defense debuff it gives to the poor son of a bitch you gave it to, it is definitely gonna come in handy when finishing them off. In terms of fighting other ranged players, things get a little bit more difficult. Since they usually want to be as far away as possible from you, you kind of need to step into their range of pain as well. This would mean that your W won't be used as often, but if you can land a mark on them and hit a Q, that movement speed buff is gonna come in real handy. Just make sure you don't eat too many bullets. Martina may hurt like a truck now, but her health is still the same it's ever been. You can also skip any and all the chasing by just popping your ult and delete 30% of their health and then some, but if they're ranged then they probably have some way to dodge out of the way, so keep that in mind. Another general rule I can bring up, which is just a good rule to follow as any character in this game, keep moving. The only time you should ever stop is when they are unloading basic attacks at someone. Like I've mentioned before, and I'll say it again with emphasis, you are still just as squishy as you were before broadcast mode. And uh, uh remember that you're not the only menace on Lumi Island. I think I covered everything I could? If I somehow enlightened you with this glorified shit post disguised as a guy then got you to consider trying out Martina, then I guess... mission accomplished? But let me remind once again that I am no professional. While I do admit that I made this video more so to just try and make something funny... Editor's note. I, uh... I didn't... I did also try to help you understand how to play Martina at least to some extent. If you're not gonna play her, you at least know how to counter her, I guess? But enough about that. You stuck around for this long and I have to thank you for watching all this. If you've never heard of Eternal Return before, it's an anime battle royale MOBA that's free on Steam and I wholeheartedly recommend it if it looks even slightly interesting to you. In any case, this is where I head off. So once again, thank you for watching this video. Watch the bushes. They can make a funny clicking sound.